Good morning and welcome to the lighthouse. 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 Where the light of the Lord is shining on you.
Elijah with the word of God backing him up asked the people how long will you waver hobbling between two opinions it's very very simple people of Israel if the Lord is God follow him if Baal is God follow him but the Bible says that the people were silent Elijah said I'm only one prophet but Baal has 450 prophets and brothers and sisters when you're on a mission for God you may have to stand by yourself. But as long as you're standing for God, God will stand with you. Wish I had a witness in here. I don't care how many enemies the devil tries to show up with to destroy you. If God be for you, the Bible says, who can be against you? Greater is he that's in me. Than he that is in the world. Elijah said, since I'm the only prophet of God left, and there are 450 prophets of Baal, prepare your sacrifice on the altar, but don't light it on fire, and then I'm going to prepare my sacrifice, and whichever God answers by fire will prove to be the real God. So the people took their sacrifice, which was an ox, and they put it on the altar, and they start praying to Baal. They, they, they prayed to this false god, little G, all morning long. They, they cried out, Baal, answer us. But nothing happened. They began to get frustrated, Reverend Brown. They, they started jumping on the altar and destroying the altar. And, and the day goes on, and, and now it's 12 noon, and, and they're still going at it, calling on Baal to answer them. And now Elijah starts getting petty. He said, hey, call him a little loud. Maybe he's meditating. Maybe he's on vacation. Maybe he's daydreaming. Maybe he's relieving himself. Maybe he's on a trip. Or maybe he fell asleep. I got tickled reading that. I laughed at it until I thought about it. Sometimes we call on everybody but God. We go through one little problem. We have one disagreement with somebody and we all on Facebook trying to find a meme or a quote that will support how we feel. Don't look at nobody. Keep looking at me. We put all of our problems in a status or a tweet or on your story instead of taking it to the Lord in prayer. The Lord who solved your last problem. The Lord who cleared up your last confusion. The Lord who wiped your most recent tears away. You've got to call on God and stop calling on social media. Stop calling on memes. Stop calling on images. Stop calling on quotes that you don't even know if that person said it or not. You got to call on God like your ancestors did behind the slave master's house where they laid their burdens down. You, you've got to take everything you're facing to God in prayer. The hymn writer declared, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything. Somebody say everything. To God in prayer. Elijah said, yeah, call on him. He ain't paying y'all no attention, no how. And the text says the people begin to shout louder and cut themselves with knives and swords until blood gushed out. They were going crazy. The, the, they, they went all afternoon until evening, but no sound, no reply, no response. Elijah said, all right, I had enough of this. It's my turn now. Come on over here to my altar. And he, 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 he repaired the altar 
that they had destroyed while they were carrying on trying to get this false god to respond. And after he restored the altar that they had stomped on and jumped on, and after he gets his sacrifice ready, verse 36 says, he came up to the altar and started to pray. He said, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel. Let, let it be known this day that I am your servant and I have done these things at your word. Elijah says, God, I don't want you to wait. We've been out here all day listening to these fools call on a false god, but I need you to prove yourself this day. I, I, I need you to show up right now and make yourself known. I need you to show yourself mighty this day. I need you to show yourself strong right now. I need you to show up right now. And for somebody in here this morning, maybe that's been your prayer. God, I need you to show up right now. God, I need you to prove yourself this day. God, I don't want you to wait. God, I don't want you to take your time. I need you right now. I'm struggling in school. I need you to show up right now. I'm trying to get into school. I need you to show up right now. I have more bills than money. Show up right now. My body is breaking down on me. Show up right now. I don't feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be in life. Show up right now. I need another job with better pay and better of benefits show up right now my car needs repairs that I can't afford show up right now my spouse is acting like they don't want me no more show up right now my children are being influenced by music and television show up right now you have to get the courage to ask God to show up Do you want a sweet treat but don't want the hassle of the kitchen? The Angels of Praise are having a Thanksgiving bake sale. The menu includes yellow, chocolate, or white layer cake with cream cheese icing, of course, vanilla pound cake, pineapple upside down cake, sweet potato cheesecake, and sweet potato pie. Stop by the reception desk in the lobby to grab an order form between Sunday, October 29th, and Sunday, November 12th. All orders and money are due on Sunday, November 12th. A representative will be in the Family Life Center immediately after service to receive orders, or you may return your form to the church office. Save the date for the second annual holiday pop-up shop to be held on Saturday, December 2nd, right here at FBCEE. You'll be able to shop for a variety of gifts just in time for the holidays. Would you like to be a vendor? Vendor tables are only $40 for the first table and $15 for each additional table with a three table maximum. To reserve your vendor spot, see Love Powell, Linda Ware, or Becky Richmond Sargent. Today is the final day to pick up an angel tree request form for children in need of a Christmas blessing. The absolute deadline for returning these request forms is Sunday, October 29th. If you have questions, please call Deacus Emerita Celestine Pierce. You may leave a name and contact number as well. In order to give our children a Christmas blessing, we need FBCEE members and friends to support this effort by donating to the Angel Tree. If you're able, make your Angel Tree donations by cash, check, or use of electronic giving. Please make sure you designate your donation for the Angel Tree. The deadline for all monetary donations is Sunday, November 12, 2023. In an effort to supply families with a Thanksgiving blessing, Thanksgiving blessing forms may be picked up from the church each Sunday, beginning Sunday, October 22nd, until Sunday, November 12th, from 9.30 a.m. to 12 noon. The absolute deadline to return the Thanksgiving blessing forms is Sunday, November 12th. If you have any questions, please call Deaconess Emerita Celestine Pierce. You may leave your name and contact number as well. In recognition of Clergy Appreciation Month, we take a moment to honor the clergy here at First Baptist Church East End. Thank you for your service and commitment to God and God's kingdom, as well as to First Baptist Church East End. We appreciate you.
the virtual lighthouse where the light of the Lord is shining on you. Although we aren't together here in person, we pray that something is said or done to move you right in your home. Let God's will be done and have his way to touch you right where you are. If you haven't had a chance to give, you can do so. The options are available for you on the screen. Again, we hope that something is said or done to move you in your home, wherever you are, and we pray that you will have a blessed week. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, look around at somebody and just tell them, I'm so glad to see you this morning. Tell them, happy homecoming, happy anniversary. 127 years. Amen. Come on, let's recite our Connect Declaration together. 2023 is our year to connect. According to Acts 2.42, which states, all of the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. As believers here at the Lighthouse, we vow to connect through devotion, connect through fellowship, connect through sharing in meals, observing the Lord's Supper, and connect through prayer. Through these connections, we will grow our church, bless the community, and expand God's kingdom. Here at the Lighthouse, we declare in 2023, we are powerful, we are unified, we are favored because we are connected. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, Father, it is again that we have come into your presence. You told us in your word to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and enter into your courts with praise. And because you woke us up this morning, we came here to praise you. Because we have breath in our bodies, we're going to use that breath to magnify and glorify your name. Because there's nobody like you in all the earth. No one has done for us what you have done for us. No one could have kept this church for 127 years but you. And today, God, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for everybody who's here. We thank you for those who are watching online. Thank you for those who traveled from near and far to be in service on today. And because, God, we came intentionally to give your name praise, glory, and honor, I pray that you allow the anointing to rest on us right now. Allow your power to rest on us right now. Allow your glory to set us free in this place so that we can worship you in spirit and in truth, so that we can praise you without reservation, so that some Somebody today can make a decision that I'd rather have Jesus than anything else. And we'll glorify you. We'll magnify you. We put our hands together. We say thank you. We shout hallelujah. We shout glory. We shout hallelujah. We shout glory. We shout hallelujah in this place. Have your way even now. Set us on fire in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Now I need you to reach way down, open up your mouth and release a praise in this house like you're glad to be in the service. Release a praise in this house like you're glad it's homecoming. Release a praise in this house like you're ready to give them the glory. Like you're ready to give them the glory. Like you're ready to give them the glory.
somebody a high five and say, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to give him the praise today because he's been good to me. I said, he's been good to me. I said, he's been good to me. If I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't praise him enough because he's been good to me. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise all over this building. <laughs> Woo! You know, sometimes I just sit and reflect on some of the things I've been through in my life. Anybody here ever do that? You just sit and reflect on some of the things you've been through in your life. And then you sit there and you say to myself, wow, I made it. I made it. Some of us can testify we probably should have been dead and gone because of some of the stupid stuff we did in our lives, but because God has been good to us. He kept us. Look at the name and say, he's a keeper. Y'all ain't come to have no church this morning. All right, we'll get back with y'all in a minute. Choir, God bless you. Y'all singing today. Magnify him. All right. They'll catch up with us in a minute. Y'all be seated. It's homecoming Sunday. We're celebrating our church anniversary today, 127 years. Amen. And we have some greetings. Please turn your attention to the screen. 
First Baptist Church East End, this is Pastor Howard just extending unto you greetings as you celebrate homecoming and also unto every single sister and brother in Christ from the past and to this current uh, age and season of ministry. I trust that you along with uh, Pastor uh, Jones are committed to the great work that I'm sure that God has entrusted unto you. And in reality, I hear so much about taking place in, in the life of the Lighthouse. Pastor Jones, you're doing a marvelous job. Keep loving, keep leading, and God will do the rest. So again, unto you, my beloved sisters and brothers in Christ, I love you and I pray for your best and I say happy and blessed homecoming and celebration of all the great things that God has done in the 127 years of First Baptist Church East End. Greetings, family. Good morning and welcome. Welcome to Anniversary Sunday, Homecoming Sunday. We calling it past and present. Welcome, everybody. I'm Tony, and I'm here to welcome you today. Well, guess what? The reunion choir is singing. You know Pastor Jones has a word. And guess what? After church, after church, the Snack Shack has a special edition, We're calling it the cookout edition of the Snack Shack. You do not want to miss that. So, hey, we're going to keep it short and sweet. Guess what? We still the good news in Newport News, and we are connecting in 2023. Connect to your neighbor. Connect to your family, and don't forget to connect to God. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, we're going to close this one out the way we always do, right? We're going to say this. We're going to do this part together. We're going to say it with some feeling, and we're going to pump our fists when we say it. You ready? On three. One, two, three. We are First Baptist Church. Easy in. Hey, y'all didn't say that like you meant it. Come on, pump your fist and say it again. Come on. We are First Baptist Church. Come on, give God praise, everybody. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive Kids Connection with a special presentation. Come on, let's make some noise for them. celebrate the 127th anniversary of First Baptist Church East End. Kids Connection is a ministry uh, which serves our youth. It's a youth church service and it is open to all youth ages 5 to 18. So if you know anybody, bring them to church on second Sunday so they can participate in our youth program. We've been going over the last couple of months, we've been going over the creation. And so we saw fit as we celebrate the anniversary of the church that we take you all the way back to the beginning of the world. So First Baptist, I present to you the creation. Y'all pray for these babies. On day one, lights, God separated light from dark. The moon, the stars, and the sun. Right. On day five, God created birds and fish. Yeah. On day six, God created animals and mankind. Yeah. On day seven, God rested.
present to you a poem from Shania and Cheyenne. This is The Creation by James Weldon Johnson. And God stepped out on space, and he looked around and said, I'm lonely, I'll make me a world. And as far as the eye of God could see, darkness covered everything, blacker than a hundred midnights down in a cypress swamp. Then God smiled, and light broke, and the darkness rolled up on one side, and the light stood shining on the other, and God said, that's good. Then God reached out and took the light in his hands, and God rolled the light around in his hands until he made the sun. And he set that sun ablazing in the heavens, and the light that was left from making the sun, God gathered it up in a shining ball and flung it against the darkness, spangling the night with moon and stars. Then down between the darkness and the light, he hurled the world, and God said, that's good. All right. All right. Then God himself stepped down, and the sun was on his right hand, and the moon was on his left. The stars were clustered about his head, and the earth was under his feet. And God walked, and where he trod, his footsteps hollowed the valleys out and bulged the mountains up. Then he stepped and looked, and saw that the earth was hot and barren. So God stepped over to the edge of the world, and he spat out the seven seas. He batted his eyes, and the lightning flashed. He clapped his hands and the thunder rolled, and the water above the earth came down, the cooling waters came down. Then the green grass sprouted, and the little red flowers blossomed. The pine tree pointed his fingers to the sky, and the oak spread out his arms. The lakes cuddled down in the hollows of the ground, and the rivers ran down to the sea. And God smiled, and the rainbow appeared, and curled itself around his shoulders. Then God raised his arm and he waved his hand over the sea and over the land. And he said, bring forth, bring forth. And quicker than God could drop his hand, fishes and fowls and beasts and birds swam the rivers and the seas, roamed the forests and the woods, and split the air with their wings. And God said, that's good. Then God walked around and God looked around. And on all that he had made, he looked at his sun, and he looked at his moon, and he looked at his little stars. He looked on his world and all its living things, and God said, I'm lonely still. Then God sat down on the side of a hill. By a deep, wide river, he sat down with his head in his hands. God thought and thought till he thought, I'll make me a man. Up from the bed of the river, God scooped the clay. And by the bank of the river, he kneeled him down. And there, the great God Almighty, who lit the sun and fixed it in the sky, who flung the stars to the most far corners of the night, who rounded the earth in the middle of his hands, this great God, like a mammy, bending over her baby, kneeled down in the dust, toiling over a lump of clay, till he shaped it in his own image. Then into it he blew the breath of life, and, and man became a living soul. Amen. Amen. Throughout the years. Yes. And 
I talked to this lady, and she said, you know what, Danielle? I have been doing children's church since I was 25. Wow. And guess how old I am now? I said, how old are you? She said, 75. Wow. 75 minus 25 is 50. So First Baptist, today we honor Deaconess Carmelita Walker. Come on up, Miss Walker. We honor her today for her service, for her devotion, for her dedication to the youth of First Baptist Church East End. and 27th anniversary of First Baptist Church East End, we honor you, Mrs. Walker. So First Baptist, we gave her a plaque. It says, in appreciation of Deaconess Carmelita Walker, 50 years of dedicated service, devotion, and commitment to the youth of the church. Thank you for teaching the importance of having listening ears and an obedient spirit. Presented on Sunday, September the 17th, 2023, First Baptist Church East End. God bless you, Mrs. Walker. Thank y'all so much. This concludes our presentation of Kids Connection. Come on, can we stand and give kids connection and digging this walker a big, big, big God bless you. Come on, make some noise and celebrate them. Amen. You may be seated. Everyone who works with kids connection, whether you're a teacher, faculty member, uh, student, just stand. Current kids connection, where are you? Someone in the choir. If you work with Kids Connection, stand. Come on, teachers, stand, stand, so we can celebrate you. All right, God bless you. Come on, let's give them a hand. All right. Thank you so much for what you do. Well, it's time for offering. Amen. The Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you. What? Good measure? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Thank y'all for the three of you back here who recited it with me. Amen. We're going to get that money about you today, whether you recited it or not. Amen. This is our 127th anniversary, and we are so grateful to God. Amen. That down through the years and even through a pandemic, First Baptist Church East End is still here. Amen. Praise the Lord. And we want to let the Lord know today that we are grateful, grateful, grateful for the blessings that he's given us down through the years. Amen. So First Baptist Church East End members, you have been hearing me say that on today, we're going to give our $127 anniversary assessment. Amen. And I want everybody who's able, amen, whether you're a member of the Lighthouse or not, to participate in giving $127 today as we celebrate our church anniversary. Amen. You can give in person, and if you're not, uh, if you don't want to give in person, uh, we have online options 
that are there for you on the screen or will be on the screen that you can take advantage of that. We want everybody to join in and give that 127 today because we believe that if you are a blessing to God's house, God will give you a blessing in your house. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so our trustees are coming at this time. Listen, if you say, Pastor Jones, I can't give 127. Give whatever the Lord leads you to give on this morning. But we want everybody, amen, to join in and give $127 as we celebrate our church anniversary on today. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you're sitting beside somebody that don't have 127, give it to them. You got enough. Amen. Overflow. Amen. We heard about that in Sunday school this morning. Surplus. Amen. And so we're giving today. We're giving today. And we thank you, all of you who always support the church by way of giving. Certainly those of you who are online watching who support by way of giving. And all of you who have come in today that we'll give. We thank you so very, very much. I believe that the Lord is going to bless all of us through our giving. Lord, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. We pray now that as we come to bring these gifts before you that you have given to us, that you bless them and you bless us. And for the person who may not have it to give, God, we pray that you bless them as well. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen. amen. Now, if you're giving in person, we're going to ask everyone to stand who's giving in person. If you're giving online, there are ways for you to give that are online. Please take advantage of one of those ways. Everybody stand that's giving. Everybody stand that's giving in person.
Amen. I want you all to help me thank God for the First Baptist Church East End Reunion Choir. Stand, choir. Amen. Are they singing? Praise God. God bless you all. God bless you all. We give God praise for the Reunion Choir, for our musicians, our director of worship and sacred arts, Minister Kristen Rousen. Come on, let's give everybody a hand. Amen. Thank God for you. Well, it's homecoming Sunday, so we're going to do a little roll call. We're going to do a little roll call. I'm going to start from the bottom and then go to the top. I'm going to start from the bottom and then go from the top. I'm going to start from the bottom and then go to the top, all right? So let's start at the bottom. Everybody with a Dallas jersey on, stand up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Start from the bottom, then go to the top. <laughs> Thank you. God bless you. All right. Any other football teams other than Dallas? Let me see you. Hey! All right. Somebody got on a green jersey. What's that jersey right there? What's your jersey? Looks like an Eagles jersey to me. All right. All right. If you are representing First Baptist Church East End in your attire, let me see you stand up. All right. Yay. All right. All right. Thank you so much. All right. If you are representing a college or a university, stand up. Let me see you. Hey. All right. Wait a minute. Let's call them out. I see A and T. <laughs> H U. Mizzou. ODU, Christopher Newport, who, who yelled out something back there? Virginia State. Okay. And somebody else is representing who? 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 Behold the green and gold up in here. I see, I see North Carolina Central, ECSU. Yeah, Virginia State. Yeah, yeah. FAMU, hey, FAMU in the house, all right. All right. Anybody other than me representing the high school? Yeah, yeah. What high school we got? Bethel? Yeah. Who in the back? Yeah. Who? I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> Everybody yelling at the same time. Let's start over here. Hey, Achievable Dream Middle and High. All right. Woodside. Mitchville. All right. Huntington High School. Oh, we still going. Huntington, Warren, Heritage, all right, Bethel, Huntington, all right, Howard University in the house, the original, <laughs> he said it's the original HU, I didn't say it, I didn't say it, he said it, <laughs> and I have on the one and only. I see Norcom High School. You don't know what it takes to be a great high. That's what I'm talking about, bro. I knew it. Where Mr. Pino that? Hey, y'all ain't thinking with no Greyhounds in here, did you? Yes, sir. That's right. And the drummer. That's right. We in here. Heritage, Huntington, we in here. Amen. All right. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm sorry. Okay. If you're a member of a Greek organization, stand up and do your call. Where you at? Who you with? All right. We 
got the AKAs in the house. Deltas in the house. Sigmas in the house. Q's in the house. Iota's in the house. Zeta's in the house. Who I'm missing? SG Roll. And the oldest and the coldest, first of all, A5A in the house. That's it. 06. Come on, let's give everybody a hand. Thank y'all for participating in that. Amen. If you have a birthday in the month of September, would you stand and make some noise? Hey, September, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. All right. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary in September, would you stand? Wedding anniversary. All right. All right. How many years? 31. All right. Let's thank God for 31. 42. Wow. Come on, let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm sorry. 28, but he's at work. That's all right. That's a good husband. That's right. <laughs> Come on, let's thank God for these marriages. Did I miss anybody? Okay, amen. All right. Next Sunday is our deacons, deaconess, and trustee anniversary. We thank God for our deacons, deaconess, and trustees. Amen. And my friend and brother, Pastor Cedric Rousen, will be here to preach for us on next Sunday, you don't want to go to heaven until you heard that young man right there preach. I promise you, you'll be in for a treat. Amen. We thank God for the deacons, deaconesses, and trustees. Y'all didn't celebrate them like they need to be celebrated. Come on, let's thank God for deacons, deaconesses, and trustees. Amen. Amen. All right. On today, 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 I want everybody to leave from this sanctuary, go in that family life center, and sell out the snack shack. I said, sell it out. Sell it out. Amen. They got, it's homecoming edition. So we got hamburgers. We got hot dogs. We got barbecue sandwiches. We got nachos. We got cake slices. They got chocolate cake. Old school, chocolate cake is yellow cake with the chocolate icing. They got that. They got that. But for people like me, chocolate cake is devil's food cake with chocolate icing. They got that too. Go on over there and get everything they got today. Cash and Cash App is available. So go on on over there to the Snack Shack and sell them out on today. Amen. Our Snack Shack was created so that our young people can have a life experience. They go into the Big Apple and they're going to pay little to nothing to go because of the Snack Shack. Amen. So your support of the Snack Shack is going to send them to the Big Apple. Amen. And we thank God for all of you who work in the Snack Shack and cook that food. Amen. I can't wait to get a hamburger today. Amen. Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we will funeralize Sister Brenda Manson Slade on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And we want all of you who can to please come uh, and be in support uh, of the family if you're unable to make it. We would ask that you would please send your prayers. The funeral will be live streamed on our Facebook and our YouTube page. And so please be in prayer for that day uh, as well. I want to take a moment. Um, well, actually, let me do this first. Let me do this first. Um, we have a card from Sister Kim Williams and Tiffany Garris, Pastor Jones and First Baptist Church. Thanks for the use of the Family Life Center. Sister Tiffany lost her father keeping her in prayer. We have another card. Dear Pastor Jones and First Baptist Church East End family, words are not adequate in expressing our gratitude for your outpouring of love in the loss of our sister-in-law, Maggie Jeanette Weeks. We sincerely appreciate your prayers and the beautiful letter of condolence, which was read at her homegoing service. Again, thank you for thinking of us as we remember how blessed we are to have such a loving and caring church family. With lots of love and prayer, Sam and Joyce Weeks. Amen. We're keeping in prayer all who are dealing with bereavement, grief, and loss. And I just want to take a quick moment uh, as you keep on playing in that key and just 
pause for a minute on our 127 years we've had members to come we've had members to serve and now they are serving the Lord in his presence can we just pause for one moment and just remember and reflect on those who are no longer with us God we thank you for allowing each and every person who's ever been connected to this church who is now at home with you to cross our paths. We remember their life. We remember their legacy. We remember what they meant to us. And God, we thank you that because we believe in you, one day we will see them again in heaven. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 Come on, let's celebrate all who have gone to be with the Lord. Amen. Remind me of that song. If you want to know. Y'all know that. Where I'm going. Come on, say Y'all know it. Where I'm going. What? That's too old for some of y'all. Come on. If anybody asks you. Come on, help me sing it, y'all. Where I'm going, mm -hmm. where I'm going soon. Come on, where we going? Help me say, I'm going up yonder. selection from our reunion choir and then there is a word from the Lord. Come on let's celebrate the reunion choir as they come.
Come on, just lift your hands right where you are and just begin to worship God in your own way. Come on, let worship flow out of your mouth even now. Give God verbal worship, verbal worship, vocal worship. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. All praises be to the King of Kings. God, we bless you and we honor you. You are the King of Kings. You're the Lord of Lords. We celebrate you today. We give you praise. We give you honor today. You've been wonderful in our lives. And we bless you today. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for resting on us. Send your word now. Touch somebody's heart. Transform our lives. In Jesus' name. You can praise him better than that. Come on, you can praise him better than that. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody just shout, he is wonderful. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And when we can't think of those names, we can just call him Jesus. Would you just feel this atmosphere with his name and just call him Jesus? Something happens when you call that name. Demons tremble when you call that name. Cancer dries up when you call that name. Keep me in worship, keep me in worship, keep me in worship. Illnesses and sicknesses have to flee when you call that name. Would you just lay your hand on your neighbor's shoulder ever so gently and just say, Jesus. Oh, they ought to have felt something when you said it. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. If you are visiting with us today, you're not a member of First Baptist Church East End, would you please stand so that somebody in your section can welcome you to the lighthouse. God bless you, 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 God bless you. Thank you for coming. Come anytime. We thank you so very much. As we celebrate Homecoming Sunday on today, if you have ever been connected to the Lighthouse and we haven't seen you in a while, would you stand so that we can celebrate you? Amen. God bless you. All right. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. All right.
There's a word from the Lord this morning. One verse. We're going to honor the word of the Lord by resting to our feet. Psalm 124. I've been in a series called Church Words. First Sunday was God is good. Last Sunday was can't nobody do me like Jesus. This Sunday, it's found in Psalm 124, verse 1, from the King James Version. You see it there on the screen. It simply says, if it had not been, the Lord who was on our side. You ought to say it with me. Just say, if it had not been, the Lord who was on our side. That's enough. You may be seated. It's the sermon. It's the subject. It's the scripture. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side. When is the last time mm -hmm, you look back over your life? When is the last time you sat down and allowed your mind to roll back over all the years you've been alive? Some of us have been alive for a long time. And some of us have been alive for a short time. But no matter how long you've been alive, if you are alive enough to look back over your life, you ought to be able to say, if it had not been. For the Lord, he on my side. We ought to look back over our lives individually and collectively. We think back over the hard times when we were trying to make it from one day to the next. I hear a ring media. We ought to go back in our minds to when our faith wasn't at the level that it is now. Because the realities of life had so gripped us, thank you media, and held on to us that we didn't think God cared about us. We, 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 we didn't think God was concerned about us. We didn't think that God loved us because the troubles and trials were trying to take us out. Oh, but on this anniversary Sunday, I dare you to think back. I dare you to look back. I, I dare you to stand on the edge of your journey looking at where you are now and reflecting on where you used to be. You ought to be able to say, if it had not been. I, I need somebody in this section to get with me this morning. If it had not been. For the Lord on my side. You, you, you don't even have to finish the statement. You don't have to continue with any other words. You don't need to add anything to it. You don't need to take anything away from it. The statement can stand by itself if it had not been for the Lord on our side. 127 years would not be 127 years had it not been for the Lord on our side. I'm talking about 127 years ago, in 1896, at the turn of the century, none of us were here in 1896, I don't think. <laughs> in 1896, the first x-ray photo was produced. The Tootsie Roll was introduced. The first modern Olympics game was held in Greece. 
The first public film showing in the United States premiered in New York City. The U.S. Supreme Court affirmed race separation in Plessy versus Ferguson. The first car accident occurred in New York City. The first movie theater opened in the United States. The city of Miami was incorporated. The dial telephone was patented. Yosemite became a national park. William McKinley was the president. The first large indoor football game was held. The first intercollegiate basketball game was held. And over under a tree. Reverend Anthony Johnson and a small group of worshipers came together to form First Baptist Church East End. They started worshiping under a tree. Then they moved into a small house on Oak Avenue and 29th Street. Two years later, they erected a wooden church. 23 years later, after they built a brick building, 40 years later after that, the building caught on fire, but they kept on going. They kept on trusting in God. Purchased 649 30th Street. Worshiped there until this unique and outstanding building was built in 2007. I'm giving you your church history this morning. And, and yes, although 12 pastors have preached in this church, 12 pastors have taught in this church, 12 pastors have led this church from where it was to where it is, the hand of God is really what brought us from the tree to 3000 Jefferson Avenue. And I need everybody who has ever stepped foot in this church over the last 127 years to open your mouth mouth right now and testify if it had not been the Lord on our side. I stopped by on homecoming Sunday to give God praise, even if I have to praise him all by myself because I'm praising him for the church. I'm praising him for the lighthouse. I'm praising him for First Baptist Church East End. I said I'm praising him for the church. I'm praising him for the lighthouse. I'm praising him for First Baptist Church East End because 127 years later, we are still standing. 127 years later, we are still growing. 127 years later, we are still instructing, inspiring, and illuminating his love. We've lost people, but we're still here. We've been through some ups and downs, but we're still here. Folk have talked about us and shared hated us on Facebook, but guess what? We still here because, oh, y'all weren't ready for that, was you? Because God has assigned us this church on this corner in this community to do what he has called us to do, but we wouldn't still be here if we did not have the Lord on our side. When COVID came through and we had to close the building down, the doors would still be closed if we didn't have the Lord on our side. I tell you, brothers and sisters, we owe God a home homecoming praise. I said we owe God a homecoming praise. I said we owe God a homecoming praise because if it had not been but in order to praise God for anything you have to acknowledge the things God has done and then when you begin to acknowledge the things God has done, you assess when it was done because done indicates past tense. And when you acknowledge what God has done in the past, it helps you to then thank God for what God is doing now in the present, which will in turn motivate you to thank God in advance for what God is going to do in the future. But you can't thank God for what God is going to do or what God is doing right now without thanking God for what God has already done. And if you can't find any cute words to praise them, my brother, my sister, all you got to do right now is lift your hands and just shout, if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Come on, put your hands together and thank God for being on our side. The reason why Psalm 124 
fits this occasion so well is because, as one writer says, Psalm 124 is a song of thanksgiving by the community. The community comes together in thanksgiving to sing this song to God. This song of thanksgiving is a song that all of us should be singing if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. Now notice, if you will, class, the text does not say if it had not been for the Lord on our side. The text says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side. There are many names that we use to honor God. Jehovah is one. Almighty is another. Creator is another. But what you may not know is that Lord is one of the greatest words or names that can be used to describe God. Because Lord expresses all grades of dignity, honor, and majesty. The word Lord takes all of the quintessence of God. The word Lord takes all of the substance of God. The word Lord takes all of the core of God, the royalty of God, the heritage of God, the power of God, and wraps it into one word, Lord. But it's not just enough to say Lord. You have to give God the appropriate designation because God is the Lord. Oh, God, help me in here. There are no other lords that are more Lord than God is. Therefore, the writer says, if it had not been the Lord, who was on my side. You mean to tell me that there were times that you were up late at night worried about your situation when you have the Lord on your side? You mean to tell me that there are times where you're about to pull your hair out and raise your blood pressure when you have the Lord on your side? You mean to tell you ain't got quiet in here now. You mean to tell me that you let the enemy make you feel like you don't have any victory in your life when you have the Lord on your side? You ought to go to sleep at night, keep your blood pressure regulated, stop pulling your hair out, stop driving yourself crazy, ruminating over everything that you perceive to be wrong in your life because if you know that the Lord is on your side, then victory automatically belongs to you in every area of your life. <laughs> Prophesy to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord has already giving you the victory. Your neighbors should have started shouting when they received that right there. I said the Lord is already giving you the victory. I don't care what it looks like. I have victory. I don't care what it sounds like. I have victory. I don't care what the doctor said. I have victory. I don't care what the bank account says. I have victory. I don't care how down I get, how low I go, how muddy I feel. Victory belongs to me because God gave it to me. Victory belongs to me because Jesus died on the cross and God raised him from the dead. Victory belongs to me because the Bible says, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Victory belongs to me because the Bible says that I'm the head and not the tail. The Bible says I'm above and not beneath. The Bible says I'm the lender and not the borrower and I have victory because I showed up on homecoming Sunday after all I've been through this week. I walked in First Baptist. I clicked on the broadcast to hear that curly head joke in the pulpit tell me that the Lord is on my side. I need somebody who knows that you have victory because the Lord is on your side to put your hands together and give God praise because the Lord. I say the Lord is on my side. Give somebody a high five and say, we got the victory in this section over here. Y'all stop pushing me now. I'm trying to behave myself. The writer says, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, 
when our enemies attacked us. We're under attack. Our voting rights are under attack. Because Trump lied and said that the election was stolen. It wasn't stolen, you just lost, bro. Sorry for all y'all that voted for him. <laughs> Shade. Our health care is under attack. COVID continues to make us sick. Heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, cancer. Many other illnesses affect us, especially in the black community. The church is under attack. Pastors are leaving the pulpit because they're stressed out burned out and they don't have any real support. Churches are having to navigate finding resources beyond the tithe and offerings and losing faithful members to death or the next hot church down the street or to the notion that you don't need to go to church anymore. We're under attack. That's why, as we reflect on 127 years, we have to thank God that we're still here. Here it is, because somebody is praying. Somebody is going before God and praying against all manner of illnesses and diseases. Somebody is going before God and praying that strongholds be brought down and powers and principalities be brought down and anything exalting itself against the knowledge of God being brought down. Somebody is praying that the condition of people of color in this country and around the world would improve. Somebody is praying for a revival. Somebody is praying for a shaking. Somebody is praying that prison doors would be open and blind eyes would be open and hard hearts would be open so that churches will be revived and souls will be saved and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So y'all don't shout about stuff like that. You want me to say that you're going to get a house and you're going to get a car. No, 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 no. I came to tell you God is sending revival. God is sending a shaking. God is sending a birthing of a remnant that's going to serve them until the rest of their life. And I believe that when God sends this revival that somebody's praying for. Young people will run to God and put the guns down and put the perks down and put the molly down and put the lean down and walk away from any situation that would have their bodies being abused or taken advantage of. And although we are under attack in many ways, the word of God lets us know, brothers and sisters, that the Lord is on our side. Second Thessalonians 3 and 3 says, but the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. The Bible says that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Somebody in here needs to thank God for prayer. Prayer will bring change. Prayer will defeat the enemy. Prayer will sustain the church for another 127 years. Somebody ought to help me give God praise because when we pray, we receive help from the Lord. Somebody just shout pray. The writer said, it had it not been the Lord who was on our side, when enemies attacked us, they would have swallowed us up alive. He says, when our enemies, look at the text now, when our enemies attacked, E.D., us, that indicates that they were under attack. Then he says, they would have swallowed us up alive. No, 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 you missed it. See, I'm an English major, so I got I to gotta make sure you catch it. They would have swallowed us up alive. No, 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 no. They would have. <laughs> swallowed us up alive. Now, I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree, nor am I the sharpest pencil or the sharpest crayon in the crayon box. 
But look like to me when the writer said that they were under attack and they would have swallowed us up alive, it indicates that there was an attack, but the attack did not succeed. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't come to have no church with me today. It, it, it did not succeed. And you sitting next to somebody this morning and you don't even realize that this week they were attacked. You sitting next to somebody who almost didn't make it to church today, had to crawl to the car and crawl in church and crawl into the pew. But thank God the attack did not succeed. Oh, help me, Jesus. The writer says that when our enemies attacked us, they would have swallowed us up alive. But can I give you the shout this morning the shout is that we're still here to tell our story and is there anybody's testimony today I'm still here to tell the story yes the enemy came for me yes I was under attack yes I've had to fight for my life but thank God I'm still here to tell the story yes the church has gone through changes yes the church has been criticized yes the church has been ridiculed yes the church has been been made fun of. Yes, the church has seen division, but look around in this building. The church is still here to tell our story. I said the church is still here. I said the church is still here. I said the church is still here to tell our story. Can I call a witness to the stand? Come here, Moses. Pharaoh and his army were coming after the children of Israel after they escaped Egypt. And when the people saw Pharaoh coming, they got with Moses and said, Moses, you should have left us in Egypt instead of bringing us out here to die. But Moses said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Can I call another witness to the stand? Come here, King Jehoshaphat, when he was getting ready to go into battle, the Lord sent the prophet Jehaziel to tell the king, you will not have to fight in this battle. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord and tomorrow go out against them and the Lord will be with you. Can I call another witness to the stand? Come here, Yolanda Adams. All things work according to the master's perfect will and no matter what you're going through remember God is using you for the battle is not yours the battle is the Lord's come here Isaiah no weapon formed against you shall prosper and the reason why the Lord is on our side is because every battle that we faced over the last 127 years belongs to God and you ought to decree it and declare it even in your own life every battle every fight every struggle every attack that I have to face it belongs to God. Somebody ought to help me praise God for every fight you didn't have to fight in. Somebody ought to help me praise God for every fight that you never had to break a sweat. Somebody ought to help me thank God for every battle that was already won because you have the Lord on your side. I'm glad this morning that although in the next 127 years, First Baptist, we will come under attack from time to time, but I got news for you. I said I got news for you. The hand of God is on this church. It's a hand of blessings. It's a hand of prosperity. It's a hand of fruitfulness. It's a hand of increase. It's a hand of favor. And I'm so glad that when the attack comes, the same Lord who was on our side under the tree is the same Lord who will be on our side again. Ty Tribbett said if he did it before, He'll do it again. Same God right now. Same God back then. I'm done preaching. God bless you. Happy anniversary. Happy homecoming. But I came to tell you, First Baptist, no matter what the attack is, we're going to keep on showing up and giving God the glory. And the more we give him the glory, the more he'll bless us. The more we give him the glory, the more he'll open doors. Yes. The more we give him the glory, the more he'll make ways. The more we give him the glory, 
the more he'll add to the church the more we give him the glory the more he will enlarge our territory and I showed up at First Baptist on this Sunday morning to tell somebody forget about everything else just give God the glory because if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side we wouldn't have anything to glorify him for but since the Lord has done so much for us since the Lord has kept us 127 years since the Lord has brought us this far we ought to take the time and give him the glory for every mountain He's brought us over for every valley he's seen us through for every blessing for every time he fought our battles every time he defeated the enemy I give you glory I give you praise I give you the honor I bless your name because if it had not been if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side you ought to put your hands together and thank God that he was on our side. I praise God today for the church at large, but I praise God for this church. That the Lord has sustained for a century and then some. And as I look around this room, I see generations sitting in this church today. The Lord is on our side. Infants, babies, children, preteens, teenagers, young adults, adults, senior citizens the Bible says his truth endures to all generations you ought to thank God this morning for your church you ought to thank God for your even if you don't go to this church whatever church you go to you ought to give God praise right now for your church had not been they had not been they had not been I read it in the New Living Translation New Living Translation says what if the Lord was not on our side I don't know about you but I'd be in trouble no I wouldn't be in trouble I just wouldn't be here dead and gone but thank God he was on our side so the next time you face something troubling in your life just remember the Lord is on your side I want to pray for somebody today you're going through something even if you're not going through something, you know somebody who is going through something. I want to pray for you today. Run to the altar. Come on. The Lord is on your side. It may not be you. You may want to come and stand for somebody else. The Lord is on your side. Yeah.
those of you that are out there that are not at the altar, make your seat an altar and just intercede for somebody else that may be at the altar. If you're holding somebody's hand right now, I want you to squeeze it real tight and say, there's nothing too hard for God. One more time, squeeze it and say, there's nothing too hard for God. There's nothing. Hey, nothing. That's really the prayer. There's nothing too hard for God. Lord, you have reminded us today that you are on our side. Although we may be burdened, although we may feel heavy, although we may be carrying something that's too much for us to handle, we stop by this altar to say thank you for being on our side. We've declared in the atmosphere what your word says. That there is nothing that is too hard for you. So because your word says it, God, we're going to stand in agreement with what your word says. You said we could cast our cares on you. Because you care for us. God, I pray that you put a reminder in somebody's spirit right now that you care for them. Even if other people have mistreated them or not handled them with care, God, you care for them. They're your child. And not only do you care for them, God, but you will take care of them. Whatever the need is, whatever the desire is, whatever the prayer request is, God, we raise it today. And we lay it at your feet because there's nothing too hard for you. If it's a sickness or an illness, you can heal it. If it's a financial burden, you can provide. If it's a mental health issue, you can restore. If it's pain in our bodies, you can give us relief. If it's somebody in our family that doesn't know you, you can turn their heart towards you. And we're believing you for miracles right now. We're believing you for signs and wonders right now. We're believing you that you're going to show up in our lives, wherever the area of need is, I thank you, Lord, that your hand is stretched out, moving across this world that you created, letting us know that you've got it all under control. Even when we get out of control, you're still in control. And because you're in control, we can leave whatever it is right here with you. We're not carrying it back with us. We're leaving it with you. Because if we say that we trust you, then we need to put that trust into action. So I speak over these at this altar in the name of Jesus I speak a blessing I speak favor I speak a miracle this week I speak a miracle today I pray God that according to the power that works in us you would do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think in the name of Jesus.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we count it already done. And we say amen. Would you praise God like it's already done? Come on, let your sound reach heaven. Let your sound reach heaven. Yay! It's already done. Tell that neighbor one more time, there's nothing too hard for God. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus, the Bible says you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. If you want to be saved today, we invite you to come. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. everlasting life is after your life down here is over you'll keep on living in another place that's nothing like this place why don't you come today can I tell you something that most preachers won't tell you whether you saved or not the Lord is on your side because if he wasn't you wouldn't be sitting in here listening to me. Come on and connect with Jesus today. He's already forgiven you for everything you've done wrong. And he loved you before you were even born. If that's you today and you want to be saved, we invite you to come. If you want to be saved, we invite you to come. If you want to connect with us and join this church, we invite you to come. We love to have fun in this church. We love being family in this church. Generations of generations are represented in this church. We can't wait for you to join us. Even if you're watching me online and you want to be saved or you want to join the church, just put us a comment in the comment section or send us an inbox. If you want to join the church, you can come. You can come. You can come. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you're already saved. You already believe Jesus died and rose from the dead. You may be connected to a church or have been connected to a church at one time. And you just want to make a statement that today I'm getting back in line because I've been out of line. You can come. Let today be the day that you make a decision that for the rest of my life, I'll serve the Lord. If you want to be saved, you can come. If you want to join the church, you can come. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ, you can come. Amen. Amen. If it had not been, we can stand, for the Lord on my side. Tell me where, where would I be? Oh, where, where would, would I 
Look around and sing it to somebody. Come on. If, if it had not been yes for the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where would I be? Where? One more time, everybody, come on, say it. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, oh, tell me where would I be? Where, where would I be? God, we thank you. For 127 years, thank you for First Baptist Church Easting. Thank you that today we were able to connect with family members from past and present and future. Thank you that you reminded us that you are on our side. Bless us now as we go to our next destination. We pray for safety and security that we find in you. We pray, Lord, that you would handle anything that's too heavy for us. And we declare that there's nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' name, if it had not been for the Lord.